Lise, and this is the Stage of the Union, the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. What is the Kennedy Center? For starters, the Kennedy Center is America's National Cultural Center, a place dedicated to the performing arts, which is harbored in our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. So, why Kennedy? Interestingly enough, the week before that fateful day in Dallas, Kennedy was meeting with major donors to the center, and as a result of his assassination, it was deemed appropriate that this building should bear his name in his honor. This is the only living memorial dedicated to him. So what is a memorial? A memorial is meant to convey a sense of remembrance to a place, event, or a person. And what is remembrance? According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, remembrance is the state of bearing something or someone in mind, the ability to remember, a memory, the period over which one's memory extends, an act of recalling to mind, a memory of a person or a thing or event, or something that serves to keep in or bring to mind, reminder, commemoration, memorial, a greeting, or a gift, recalling or expressing friendship or affection. So, memories. Personally, the memories of this place, as someone from D.C., recalled the time of my first date in the city with my now husband, and which continued to be in the center of our lives. A place where my mom also got to enjoy, as well as my brother, and my dad too, who came all the way from Peru to witness my wedding at the time. As I remember my moments in this building, I put significance to the place where the memories are harbored. But as a memorial itself, this building harbors significance. Okay, so memorials have significance. How? Well, as a nation, we remind ourselves of the moments and people we've come to memorialize. In the nation's capital, particularly in the monuments that bear some of the most consequential presidents, they bring importance to their contribution to the nation and us as Americans. What does this mean for Kennedy? After all, it is a performing arts building. Here's what he said, which is actually engraved in the building. There is a connection, hard to explain, logically but easy to feel, between achievement in public life and progress in the arts. The age of Pericles was also the age of Phidias. The age of Lorenzo de' Medici was also the age of Leonardo da Vinci. The age of Elizabeth, also the age of Shakespeare. And the new frontier for which I campaign in public life can also be a new frontier for American art. Okay, slow down, Camelot. What does that mean? Suppose we consider that John Kennedy, along with Jackie, made the arts part of their campaign endeavor. After all, they both were hailed as ambassadors for the arts and culture in the United States in their time. Also, progress in the arts? How is this significant to Kennedy? Or to anyone as a citizen of this country? Why was it important to harbor artistry in this country? In this lecture, aside from answering these questions, we will dive deeper into the elements that made the Kennedy Center a significant building, not only in Washington, D.C., but for the nation as a whole, from the conception of the American artist to the admiration from the American audiences from the conception of America's stage to the power of America's show. Let's begin by asking, what is the significance of being an artist in this country? In the old world, monarchs and nobles were the commissioners of the arts. This is somewhat symbolic to who was harboring the art in Europe. Kennedy makes mention of this, such as the Medici and Queen Elizabeth, both harboring artists like Da Vinci and Shakespeare. But America was conceived as a republic, to which Lincoln famously said, government of the people, by the people, for the people. 
This is important because as a break from the monarchies of the old world and in founding of the republic, it is ingrained in the constitution that the new American society was meant to promote the progress in the arts, which Kennedy makes mention. As a representative democracy, America highlights the importance of promoting the arts to the people and for the people. This arguably has led to America's significant contribution to arts and culture around the world. From the birth of jazz to the vibrant works of musical theater, both quintessential American contributions to our society, which has allowed for an industry of entertainment that has transcended into the world, becoming America's soft power, in part thanks to the harboring of the artist and its craft. But what about the audience? How is this significant to the American public? For starters, there was always an intention to create a hall for the performing arts in the nation's capital for the American audience as a whole. It was more vocalized by First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt, who idealized the creation of a proper national cultural center, which during the Great Depression was in part a reason to create jobs for unemployed artists. However, this did not materialize until President Eisenhower signed this conception into law, reaffirming the power of our government to promote progress in the arts. This was significant to the American people, the American audience, to have in D.C., among other powerful symbols of the nation, a national stage. And it was not just federal dollars that went into this, but a significant portion of the funds came from the people. During Kennedy's presidency, fundraisers such as the 1962's An American Pageant for the Arts was a massive driver, which had an incredible repertoire of artists where anyone could be in the audience. To this, the idea of an American stage was dubbed as a place where both the American artists and the audience can meet. From Jackie Kennedy, to anyone like us, to the actual president, we are all members of America's audience. With a stage that signifies America's constitutional idea of promoting progress in the arts, how is this significant in its location in Washington, D.C.? Prior to the Kennedy Center, we already had a couple of venues already existing in D.C., such as the National Theater and the Daughters of the American Revolution Constitution Hall. Both, however, are private institutions. For America's capital to harbor a national performing arts center of significance, it meant that the location was important. And it became actually one of the lengthiest site searches I can personally think of. The commission that focused on making the cultural center a reality was tasked with locating the building in several areas in D.C. This particular design of the center was meant for a location around the National Mall. And like among other locations, the commission had planners to conceptualize the buildings as they analyzed the pros and cons of the sites. Other locations were considered, particularly in downtown by Pennsylvania Avenue and another one in Foggy Bottom, the neighborhood which ultimately be the selected site. The site selection was very controversial. There were plans for Highway 66 to go through this location as well as already existing government buildings like the old Naval Observatory that were on the way. But after all, the site was ideal because it was the only location by the Potomac River that was not yet developed. And the commission preferred this because they thought it would provide a nice design opportunity due to its proximity to the water. After considering several architects, the commission ultimately decided on Edward Durrell Stone, who was known for his civic buildings such as the embassy in India which talk about style and precedent. However, the original design was very different from today. For Durrell, the connection to the water seemed very important, and this design had a very direct connection to it. But because of costs, it had to be redesigned into what Stone knew best, which is quintessentially a civic modern style that he was known for. Stone was significant in the making of America's stage, as he wanted to make sure that music, opera, and theater had their own space, but under the same roof. After Kennedy's assassination, 
The commission thought it was very important to have the National Cultural Center to be named after him, which was in some ways metaphorical to his campaign message regarding the progress in the arts. This allegory seems quite interesting as a fulfilled campaign promise. Even more significant, it was during the groundbreaking of the building in which Lyndon B. Johnson used the same golden shovel that in 1898 was used by President McKinley for the White House tree planting, in 1914 by President Taft for the Lincoln Memorial, and in 1938 by President Roosevelt for the Jefferson Memorial. And as the Kennedy Center was being finished, it did not escape criticisms to its design. One of its utmost critics was Ada Louise Huxtable, who did not refrain from expressing her views of the building. She said that the Kennedy Center was a glorified candy box, a building that Nazi architect Albert Speer will have approved of, or a genuine people's palace. But people's palace actually makes sense. Having a red carpet for all Americans was ultimately what Stone idealized, deriving from the importance of being America's stage for all Americans. And anyone is able to visit the Kennedy Center, even when not attending a particular show. Aside from the stages, the doors are open to the public in most spaces, especially the roof. Upon its completion, it was time for the show to start. Did the Kennedy Center live up to its significant role in the arts and culture of America? For starters, as America's national stage, the place is home to the National Symphony Orchestra. But it is not only classical music, but other forms of arts and music that can take place in the center. And every year, the center celebrates American artists who have made a contribution to America's repertoire with the Kennedy Center honors. From George Lucas, to Gloria Stephan. Every year, the Kennedy Center puts up a big show that is nationally televised and many famous artists get to showcase their work. Because of its location in DC, the center can't escape the political culture of the city. The honors usually are a boost to the local popularity of every president, and most of every one of them has attended the honors, with the obvious exception, which humors the news. And as far as humor goes, the Kennedy Center also honors American humorists and comics with the Mark Twain Prize, being the only prize in the United States that awards comedy. This is in some ways significant because as a country that has enshrined free speech, humor in American culture is as much part of our political and cultural discourse. This in some way is a reach to all kinds of performing arts that are significant in American culture. And talking about REACH, the recent expansion of the Kennedy Center is called The REACH, which was designed by American architect Stephen Hull. The REACH is the most important addition to the center, as it houses new studio and rehearsal spaces, which the original building did not have, and it was very much necessary. With most of the addition located underground, the public spaces that are created above are open to anyone, just like in the main building. These spaces are additional stages for shows and movies, which in part add to the idea that everybody can come to the Kennedy Center and enjoy it at any given time, thus an extension of America's stage reaching out to the American audience beyond the walls of the main building. In the end, the Kennedy Center is a living memorial in remembrance to the president whose message resonated with an American idea of progress in the arts an idea that is enshrined in the Constitution, which allows artists to invent and create for an audience that can access that creation in a stage that unifies and harbors them both. And thus, the Kennedy Center is a stage for the union. Thank you.